Hi, flower fans, and welcome to my floral studio. I'm Charmaine Turbo here in Zone 9B at our little microflower farm called Turbo Farm. Today, I'm going to share with you how we're going to build a low and wide centerpiece that is going to be in an atypical vessel, and it is going to be inspired by Diwali. So what that means is bright, bold colors, the festival of lights. So let's get started. So let's take a look at our vessel. It is about 16 inches wide and about three inches mouth opening here. So there's a couple ways that we could outfit this. If you really want to hide all your mechanics, you could use a brick, a floral foam, maybe wrap it in ribbon and just set some pins into it to hide the closure. Um, for today, we are going to use simple uh, floral tape. It's great because it's just going to allow us to have a little bit of structure without getting in the way too much. So we're just going to stretch one piece across here and we're going to create a small grid pattern. And what this will do is just give our botanicals as we set our structure a little bit of support. Now floral tape is great because it's very, very tensile once it's down. But the most important thing is, is that your vessel is clean and dry to start. If your vessel is wet at all, this stuff will not stick and you'll find it lifting off. Now the tape that I'm using is a half inch width, as you can see. Um, I don't mind using quarter inch too, as it allows you to have a little bit more wiggle room, but this is what I have today. So I am just going to whip this tape all the way around the collar over the areas that I have tape to secure my tape. I'm just going to spin this all the way around. I will usually go twice over, but for today, I think because of how narrow this vessel is and everything will nestle together, I'm good with just going once around and overlapping my tape. So there we go. And as you can see, I've created my tape with a grid pattern. So one all the way across and then one, two, three pieces of tape coming around and then I've taped around the collar. Next, we're gonna add the water. Here's my trusty hose. I'm gonna add a little water. A lot of you might ask whether we add floral food into our water. I actually like to use the hydrator um, that we put in with our buckets when we're harvesting our flowers because this keeps the water clean and it provides a slow drip of nutrition to our flowers. So. When I make these pieces, I can make them a day or two ahead sometimes, and this will provide that slow drip of food instead of the high sugar that will otherwise blow out your bloom. So this gives me a little bit more control. So in a vessel like this, there's probably hmm, maybe half a gallon. So I'm just going to give a little, little light pump of this into the water. Come on. There you go. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our base and or our structure set up. How we're going to do that is we're basically going to fill the vessel with greenery and in doing so it will create the basic shape that we're going to be working with. Now when it comes to creating our shape, I like to use various types of greenery. So typically I'll use three different types to create that visual interest instead of using just one and then it looking mass and or the same throughout. So today we're going to use basil, our lemon basil. It smells amazing and our clients love it because it's different. Um, we also have scented geranium. And for a little pot, we have what's called big wart. So here we go. When I'm creating this structure, I want to basically create almost kind of a heart shape. And then I also want to be extending out lengthwise because this is gonna be going on a long table today. I wanna make my cuts at 45 degree angles so that our stems continue to drink. Because we are working with a glass vessel, I find it's really important to make sure that we have our greenery cleaned off. We don't want it to look um, messy with the finished product. The fact is, is that you're going to have so many beautiful flowers up here and out to the side that very few people are going to be looking at what's in the bottom of the vessel. Again, if you really, really need to hide your mechanics, you can um, use floral foam and wrap it with ribbon and set some pins in. But for today, we're just using our tape and here we go with our greenery. I'm just going to start laying it in. And as we go, it will start to all sit up together. At first, some of these pieces might not sit down into the water, but as you put more material in, it will. So never fear, just be patient. 
um, because it's not like we're working with chicken wire or the floral foam. We're basically creating a nest with the natural materials that we're placing into the vessel. As you can see, I've used my light green variations in greenery to create my base and basic shape of this kind of V shape. Next, I'm going to take some abelia, which I absolutely love. Um, it's a little darker green. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to create a little bit of contrast with my greenery alone. And because it's got a little bit more rigid structure, it's going to allow me to create that shape just a little bit more, as you can see, as I set it in. Now things will wiggle, so don't fear. It's part of the natural process of playing with flowers. And we're just going to move this over so that we can get a little bit more width. Next, we're going to continue on and keep adding some botanicals to our piece. This is going to, again, help build our nest. This is just good old baby's breath that has been beautifully dyed to give you a little tiny um, punch of color. We're going to keep these pieces relatively short. And we're just going to simply insert them in and just scatter them about. And these will offer some contrast to our blooms that we're going to be placing into this vessel shortly. Again, make sure that they're getting into water. This piece is going to be visually seen from both sides of the table. So what I do on that side, I kind of want to do a similar thing on the other side. So again, I have these little short pieces and I'm just going to nestle in. And for the ends, I'm going to make some longer pieces that will visually come out and reach out a little wider than the piece itself. As you can see, and it might be a little hard to see right now um, because we have so much color and things around, but um, we've got the basic shape of a V, fuller, and it's coming up here. And we have some taller elements that we will chase back to create that V kind of feeling. So next is we're going to start adding in our stars of the show, our dahlias. Get ready. Let's go. My favorite beauties to the farm this year is Bradley Aaron. Look at this. Diwali is all about bold and bright colors, so we are going to use these as our main focals, and we will sprinkle and tinkle other colors to make things pop. So as you can see, we're slowly following our shape of our greenery, and we're doing the same on one side versus the back, and just trying to mimic and follow that shape. We're still working with our dahlias, which are our main focals. And we're interchanging darker colors with lighter colors to create that pop of light for Diwali. So I've now set in our dahlias. Yeah, there was a little bit of finagling back and forth, but you could see the general structure that we've done. We've added contrast just by using our dahlias, the light versus a dark. Kind of hard to see on camera, but when you're creating, create a lot of movement. Just keep telling yourself in and out because that will create the depth that will also show on camera. So next we're going to add our zinnias. Our zinnias are... These beautiful mix of pastel and peaches. Again, we're just accenting our color palette. And we're going to start making things pop. As we get going with this piece, um, flowers are starting to lock together a lot easier now. So this is a great time that you can start creating more movement with your piece with the longer stems. It's somewhat hard when you're starting off to create these long stems. You know that I was finagling with this dolly and it just kept going fallen over. Um, but now that we've got enough material set in the vessels, we can now um, put some of the longer stems in. You also don't want to forget to draw your eye down into the vessel too, which also is fun to create interest. So um, don't be scared of some short stems on the sides of the vessel and we'll keep working our way around. Be sure to look at the shape of each flower. See how this one has a nice curve that way and and whether you want it to face out, but I always like things to look a little bit more natural, like they're looking away from you. All right, we got our zinnias in. Next, I'm going to be adding some of our beloved Cosmos, and this is what I would deem like a flower filler. So whoo, don't fall that way. Come on back. It's going to be a little, we've got some beautiful cranberry colored ones. I like using flowers as filler, not necessarily greenery. Place them in back here because we do want to honor both sides of the vessel. Next, we're going to move on to Japanese anemones. Shape and form, that's what we're going for. 
These guys are really long. So a couple ways that you can use them is you can just use their entire length and just let them wisp off. They are probably a little long for my liking for this piece, but let's see what we end up doing. We set one here, nestle this guy in. Now we're starting to get tight. We'll soften that one up later, that line. So for some pops of color, we're going to use some straw flower. And I'm working from the front of the piece here. I'm just going to visually start having some space between flowers. And I like how these ones are actually nodding because they were grown face up. Okay, to create some really cool visual interest, we have Grevillea. So I am going to go and slot this in right over here. And there you have it, flower fans. Ta-da! Diwali-inspired centerpiece in an atypical vessel. So like our video, subscribe to us, and join us on our website at www.turbofarms.com to learn more about how we're growing rainbows here in Zone 9B. Thanks for watching. Flowers or bust.